come and join my new Discord server. Link down in the bio. Number 1 I'll start off by saying I'm a big fan of your channel, and of scary stories in general, and that even though I'm a long-time listener, this is the first time I've shared my story online. I've wanted to get this off my chest for a while, so here's my cautionary tale. At the time, I was 21 years old, and totally broke. I worked for a consultancy firm that wasn't a big player there or anything. In fact, I was pretty much at the bottom of the company totem pole. I earned enough money to get by, but always had dreams of travelling to another country and studying abroad. If I was ever going to make that dream a reality, I needed another source of income. It was around that time that OnlyFans started blowing up. For the two people listening who don't know what that is, OnlyFans is a website where people, mostly women, share pictures and videos with paying subscribers. This is usually, uh, mature content. It's pretty controversial with some people being all for the platform, and others saying it's sleazy and gross. I'd heard a few stories about women making fat stacks from the comfort of their own homes, and even though I'm no Belle Delphine, I figured, yeah, what the hell, maybe I can earn a few extra bucks too. I made an account, and recorded a little intro message for any prospective followers. Then I took my first raunchy pictures and uploaded them. I'd casted out my net, now I just had to wait for a few fish to come swimming by. After a few weeks, I'd attracted a few followers, all of whom were subscribed for $10 a month. Some of them even gave me tips, or paid me extra for exclusive content. I made a promise to myself that whatever money I earned through the site would go directly into my travel fund, and as soon as I had enough money to go globetrotting, I'd stop using the platform altogether. In the meantime, I had a lot of work to do at my real job. One afternoon, I was at a business conference, networking alongside my co-workers. Where I live, business cards are still a formality, even for low-level grunts like me, and I handed out dozens to prospective clients who seemed interested in working with our company. Honestly, I met so many new people that day, all of them in similar suits and with similar haircuts, that all of their faces and names seemed to blur together in my memory. I returned home, exhausted from the socialising. That evening before bed, I logged into my OnlyFans account to check how things were going. Oh, great. I had a new subscriber. This new guy, who went by the unassuming username, John Smith, sent me a direct message as soon as he saw I was active. Ten bucks a month? Netflix doesn't even charge that. It's worth it. You won't be disappointed. So far I like what I'm seeing. You're very beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. He sent me a few more friendly messages, asking me pretty innocent questions, like if I had a dog. I didn't. If I was dating anyone, I wasn't, and if I lived with my parents, I lived with a roommate who was away that week. You know, you really are very beautiful, he messaged me. Thank you. I bet you get down more often than a blow-up doll, right? Oh. <laughs> Can I make a request? Like a picture request? It depends what it is and what you tip me. If I give you five bucks right now, would you take a picture of yourself pouting into the camera? Well, it had been a long day, but even though I was tired, I wanted the money, so I quickly dolled myself up and took the picture for the guy. I sent the picture, which he could unlock for five dollars. He unlocked it, and seemed pleased with what I'd sent. No more than a minute later, he sent me another request. How about one of your pretty feet now? I'll pay you another five. Sure, whatever you want. I'll never get what's up with some guys and feet, but of course I took the picture for him and sent it, again behind a five dollar paywall. He made a couple more requests, each time paying me five bucks. Easy money, I thought. One of me in high heels, one of me in such and such a position, etc. Then he sent me another request, this time for ten dollars. Add me on Instagram. He included his account name in the message. Ten bucks just to add a guy on Instagram? Sure, why not? I hadn't updated my Insta for over a year, and only had a couple of posts on there anyway. I took his ten dollars and added him. Strange, there weren't any posts on his account, 
but the circle around his blank profile picture was highlighted, meaning he had recently added to his Instagram story. Just out of curiosity, I clicked on it to see what he had posted. It was a video of my house, posted two hours ago, taken from the woods just outside. The next story played, uploaded five minutes ago. It was another video of my house, this time much closer, taken from the other side of the street. The video zoomed in on my bedroom window, the only room where the light was on, the room I was in. The third story, uploaded just two minutes ago, was taken from just outside my porch window. He was right outside my front door, filming the inside of my house through the glass. A message popped up in my DMs. Let me in. Terrified, I locked my bedroom door immediately and called the police, telling them that someone was outside my house. All the while, he continued DMing me. Come outside, or I'll have to come in. The door handle downstairs started rattling as I cowered in fear upstairs, waiting hopelessly for help to arrive, screaming out of my bedroom window for help. This wasn't the best neighborhood, let's put it like that, and my neighbors either couldn't hear me or didn't want to help. The guys rattling on the door handle turned into banging, then slamming. Suddenly, everything downstairs fell silent. I thought he had gone, but after a few minutes, I could hear tapping on the downstairs windows, and shortly after that, the smashing of glass. I'd soon learn that he had used a rock to smash the living room window. Not thirty seconds later, I could hear sirens off in the distance. By the time an officer arrived to check that I was okay, the guy was long gone. I told the investigators everything. They patrolled the area to look for any suspicious looking guys, found nobody and suggested I stay somewhere else for a while. I asked them to hang around while I packed a bag. As I got in my car to drive to my parents' place, I checked my phone one last time. There was one unread message in my OnlyFans DM box. Pleasure doing business with you. I told my parents everything that had happened and tried my best to get some sleep. That night, I was plagued with questions. Who was John Smith? What was he planning on doing? How did he know where I lived? My private information was of course not available on OnlyFans. I was relatively new to town and didn't know many people in the area. The next day, I pieced two and two together. My business card. It didn't just have my company address on, but mine as well. The fact this happened the night after that networking event couldn't have been a coincidence. I'm convinced that the creep was one of the people I'd met that day. Using the information on the card, he must have found my account online and decided to pay me a visit. I passed that information along to the authorities, along with the dozens of business cards I'd collected that day. This of course resulted in nothing. There was no evidence to speak of, and the Insta account was obviously a throwaway. I realize now that he was asking me those friendly questions at the start to see if I lived alone and to check I didn't have a guard dog. Needless to say, I quit using the site. I've moved back in with my parents permanently now, but can't afford to give up my job at the consultancy firm. Now, whenever I go into work and meet with our clients, I put on a brave face. But inside, I'm always questioning whether the guy I'm working with is the same one who was outside my house that night. Number 2 This all took place in my home country of Brazil. My buddy had a friend called Antonio. I never met the guy personally, but everyone who had told me he was a really funny guy, and like most funny guys who are at least a little bit handsome, he was very popular with the ladies. One day, Antonio told my buddy that he had organized a date with a model. A model, said my friend. You're serious. Anyone I've heard of? Maybe, said Antonio, who handed his phone over to my friend. Open on the screen was an OnlyFans page. The girl whose page it was didn't have that many images or videos uploaded, so it was obvious her page was pretty new, but my friend did recognize her immediately. She was a local woman 
called Isabella. Young and absolutely gorgeous. One of the best looking girls he had ever laid his eyes on. In his words, she had a booty like an onion. he would make a grown man cry. Antonio had met her in our small town and asked her for her contact information. Instead, she took his phone and opened up her OnlyFans page. From there, he became a follower. He sent her a DM and asked her out on a date. She said no at first, but Antonio was persistent and kept asking. Rather than reply using words, she sent back an image which was hidden behind a paywall, the equivalent of about 50 bucks. Antonio was a pretty wealthy young man, so, curious as he was, he paid the money and opened the message without a second thought, hoping for a raunchy picture. The image was just text, a time and address for their date. It also said to bring money to pay for dinner. Like I said, my friend knew who Isabella was, and knew that she already had a boyfriend. A mean fellow de my called Davi. Davi rolled with some really bad dudes, was into some shady shiz, and you could tell just by looking at the guy that you wouldn't want to mess with him. My buddy warned Antonio to be careful, to cut contact with Isabella, and not to go on this date with her. Antonio didn't listen, since Isabella told him that she was single, and that her and this Davi guy must have broken up. That evening, Antonio got dressed up and drove off on his moped to meet Isabella. Now my friend, being a man of culture, was of course a little bit curious himself about Isabella's online uploads. He decided to sign up on the site and became a follower of hers himself. It was only cheap to do so, the equivalent of a couple of bucks a month. Well, there weren't many pictures and videos to look through, but Isabella was clearly focusing on quality over quantity, and my friend wasn't disappointed with what he saw. He logged off around 11pm and went to bed. That next morning, my friend sent Antonio a message, asking him how things went with Isabella. No reply. Antonio usually replied to his messages really quickly. Maybe things had gone well after all, and he was still with her. He waited until the afternoon. Still no reply. Not that unusual for Antonio, but maybe he was just getting a little afternoon delight. No. The days passed, and there was still no word from Antonio. My friend checked in with everyone who knew him, including his boss at work. Nobody had seen him since that night. People were starting to get worried. The authorities seemed to have little interest in helping find him, saying that Antonio was a grown man, and had probably gone off travelling or something by himself since his moped was never found. Isabella continued posting on her account as normal, and since my friend was still following her, he decided to send her a DM, asking if she knew where Antonio was. If so, was he alright? Instead of text, she sent back an image, which he could unlock, for 50 bucks. No words, just an image, hidden behind a paywall. My pal didn't have a lot of money, but something told him he had to open it. He paid the money, and opened the picture. It was a photo, of a dirty shovel, in close-up. The hand gripping it was obviously male. Behind it, he could make out a hole in the earth, large enough to fit a human inside. It was captioned. What do you think? My friend didn't want to believe it, but in his heart, he knew what had happened, and he knew he would never see Antonio again. He tried desperately to get Isabella to reply to him via DM, but that was the last he ever heard from her, too. She continued uploading content to her account, but both she and Davi left town shortly after Antonio vanished. Surely not a coincidence. It seemed like both of them were in on this together after all. So, what happened that fateful night? Scenario 1. Davi was using Isabella and forcing her to post images of herself online so he could make a little money. She was the face, and he was the one behind the messages, and lured Antonio into a trap. Scenario 2. Davi didn't know that Isabella was using the site, and when he learned that she was actually going on a date with someone, he flipped. Maybe Isabella, realizing that Antonio dressed well and must have had some money in his pocket, targeted him specifically. Maybe they held him up and he decided to fight back. Maybe they planned to do away with him from the beginning and take whatever money he brought in his pockets. Sadly, the investigators did very little to help. Davi had ties to the fuzz, so it's possible they intentionally brushed everything under the rug 
and told him and Isabella to skip down. Several months came and went, with neither Davy nor Isabella being seen around town at all. My friend continued to keep an eye on her page, hoping that a new clue would come to light. He thought that would be the end of it. Then, one night, he received a notification saying Isabella had uploaded a new photo. He logged in to check what it was. It was an image sent to all of her followers, titled, My Final Post. He opened it. It was a blurry picture of Isabella in a dark, wooded area. Her eye was black, her face cut, and she looked absolutely terrified, her hands up near her face as if she was trying to protect herself. There was no caption to explain the image. Both the picture and her account were deleted shortly afterwards. Davy hasn't returned to our town since, and for our sakes, I hope he never does. Number 3 A little while back, I started an OnlyFans account. I know what you're all thinking, but hey, I was single at the time, and I figured it was a pretty harmless way to earn a little extra dough. I started off by posting some tame stuff, and progressively got into uploading more mature images. Yeah, I'm not proud of it, but I'm not ashamed either. I lived with my parents at the time, so I had to be careful about making my content. Like I said, I wasn't ashamed, but I knew they wouldn't be as open-minded about it. As such, I always waited until they were out of the house before I took any pictures or videos, and I didn't tell any of my friends out of fear that it would somehow get back to my folks. It was very private business. After just a few months, I couldn't believe how much money I was making on the site. I'd amassed a sizable following and monthly income, so I decided to treat myself. My wardrobe was pretty old at that point, and I decided to buy some new clothes. I hit up a local store to pick out some new outfits. Now, it might sound strange to some of you, but when I got to the store, I started live streaming to my OnlyFans followers, talking to them about changing up my style and asking for their opinions on certain items. I'd often stream to my supporters through my private, for fans only YouTube channel during the day. I thought this built a sense of community. A lot of them enjoyed seeing me go about my life, whether I was just out shopping, at a cafe, or just blogging from my apartment, and I'd reply to their comments and connect with them. For the most part, they were well behaved and respectful during those streams, and I started recognizing a few of their names. It was pretty wholesome. I made my way through the store, holding the camera in selfie mode, engaging with my fans. After about 20 minutes or so, I ended the stream. At some point during that evening, I logged onto my page. That's when I noticed a message from one of my regulars. Thanks for wasting our time and money by lying to all of us. You never told us you had a boyfriend. Consider this the end of my support. I was confused. Boyfriend? Where'd he get that idea? Well, this guy was one of my biggest supporters, and I was really sorry to see him go. So, naturally, I sent him a message. Uh, hey. I am single. Free as a bird. I don't know who told you I wasn't. Do you think I'm stupid or something? I'll admit it took me a couple of months to notice, but it's obvious you're with some guy all the time. I see him in the background of all of your streams. He was with you at the store today. What are you talking about? The dude in the green shirt. I feel really sorry for the guy to be honest, dating someone who does what you do. I went back to check the recording of that day's stream, and sure enough, about five minutes in, over my left shoulder, there was a guy in a green shirt, walking quite close behind me. He was very tall, had a muscular build, looked to be in his late twenties, but already had dark circles under his eyes and thinning hair. Okay, well that didn't prove anything, just some guy behind me at the store. I continued watching the video, and yeah, the guy did seem to be behind me for most of it, popping up throughout as if he was following me, but surely that was just a coincidence. Still, my regular's message stayed in my mind. He said he'd seen this guy in multiple streams of mine. I went back and checked the previous stream that I'd done. It was of me at the mall. Nothing seemed out of place. Then I saw him. That same guy in that same green shirt, walking behind me in the distance. That stream had lasted 47 minutes, 
and you could see him behind me throughout it, sometimes far, sometimes close, but always following me. The stream ended with me at a cafe, and the guy sitting down just a couple of tables away from me, all by his lonesome. The whole time, his dark eyes were watching me. I hadn't noticed him at all. Okay, so I started getting a little freaked out at this point. Obviously, this wasn't just a coincidence. I went back and checked more of my older streams. Videos of me in town. Videos of me walking the dog at the park. Chilling on the beach. In all of them, he was there. And in almost all of them, he was wearing the same green shirt. This man, who I had never seen before in my life, had been following me on what appeared to be a daily basis. He wasn't a part of my life but I was clearly a big part of his. I wasn't sure what to do at first. He had never approached me or anything. My dad was in law enforcement, but I couldn't exactly go to him for advice. I decided to stop posting content on my account for a while, resolving to stay alert and keep an eye out for this guy, and just wait for everything to blow over. If things escalated, then I'd go and tell my pa. I figured this guy would get bored and leave me alone. Boy, how naive I was. A couple of weeks passed, and luckily I hadn't seen the green shirt guy around town. Guess my plan had worked. My fans were getting antsy about me not uploading new content, and my earnings were going down as a result. One weekend, my parents went off on a romantic getaway, and hoping to ride the OnlyFans wave a little longer, I decided to take some new photos in my bedroom. Since I was home alone, there was no risk of being caught. That night, I cooked up some dinner in the kitchen, opened the window to wear it out, and then went upstairs to snap the goods. After uploading the pictures, I started a live stream to apologize to my followers for my long absence. I told them it was back to business as usual. The salty dinner had made me thirsty, so during that live stream, I went downstairs to grab my water bottle in the living room bringing my phone with me so I could continue interacting with my viewers. I was holding my phone out in front of me, completely oblivious to my surroundings, responding to my viewers' comments. I got to one, and as soon as I read it, my stomach dropped. Hey, Mellow Cat, who's the man at your window? In the video feed on my phone, in the corner of the screen, I noticed the small, blurry outline of a figure in the darkness behind me. I turned to see the man, the one who had been following me, standing outside, his gloved hands pressed up against the living room window, his face real close as he looked in at me, his dark eyes wide with excitement. I screamed and ran upstairs with my phone in my hand. I bounded into the bathroom and locked the door behind me as I called my parents. I cried to my dad that there was some guy outside our house told him that he'd been following me for a long time. He said that they were on their way back right now, not to panic, and that my mum was already calling the cops. We didn't have any neighbours to call for help since we lived in such an isolated area, so he instructed me to run to the attic and to keep as quiet as possible until help arrived. I did as he suggested and unlocked the bathroom door. As I stepped out, I could hear quiet movements coming from the kitchen below. That's when I remembered. I had left the window open. This guy was inside my house. The access to the attic was in my parents' room, and I could already hear the guy softly calling out to me downstairs. Hello? Mellow Cat? Where are you? He was calling to me, using my OnlyFans username. I sprinted into my parents' room and slammed the door behind me, and as I went to lock it, could hear the guy storming up my stairs. Luckily, Locking the door gave me just enough time to pull down the attic's ladder and scamper up with the hook in my hand. As I climbed up, I could hear the man on the other side of the door thumping into it with all of his body weight. I pulled the ladder back up and closed the attic hatch behind me. I waited up there with my hand over my mouth as I heard the door give way. My heart was beating so fast I couldn't stop breathing heavily. Things were being thrown around and smashed in the room beneath me. All I could do was listen as the guy rampaged through my house, occasionally shouting obscenities and saying that he knew I was still in the house. This torment didn't last long, maybe only five minutes tops, but I felt like I was up in that attic for an eternity. 
The house fell silent, but I stayed out there until I heard the police sirens come rolling into our driveway. My parents weren't far behind them. During their investigation, the detectives dusted the fingerprints on the door handles. There weren't any, but there was something else. They found traces of trichloromethane. Chloroform. It must have come off a rag, or off his gloved hands. The only thing missing from our house was my laptop, which had a bunch of photos of me that I hadn't released online. This guy had clearly come for the real thing, but seeing how I climbed to safety, he settled for images instead. I haven't posted anything online since, and didn't even log on to tell my followers goodbye, since I knew that he was among them. So, in the end, I came clean to my parents about what I'd been doing, and moved in with my sister in a different town for my own safety. I won't say where, for obvious reasons, as Greenshirt himself could be listening. Yeah, despite having relatively clear images of the guy's face, and knowing that he must have been from the local area and one of my followers, they never found the guy. I have no idea how he got my address. I'm just thankful I went downstairs when I did, and my viewer caught the shadowy figure outside my window. Had that guy come in while I was streaming upstairs, I might not have heard him, and who knows if I'd still be here to share this story. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. A huge thank you to Robin Mickelson for making the amazing thumbnail for this video. Links to his stuff in the bio down below. Also, a massive shout out to all of my supporters here on YouTube and over on Patreon, especially my biggest supporters. Crawford K. McDonald, Monica Mendoza, Tom King, Alex Greensall, Philip Westra, Procupidine Natter, Gina Valera, Anime Wimp, Sarah Ramirez, Sloan Crawford, Nadine, Connor Lothan, Decaying Girl, Sieg Carla, Infamous Sempapi, Alba Madrano, Azrael Warakai, Lord 210, The Only Dorita, Ricky Cohen Jr., Hungry and Hammered, Leonardo Martinez, The Lecky, Expand On, Hamish K., Amanda Hansen, Phantom Knight, and Alicia L. Thank you guys so much for your continued support, it really helps the channel out. That about wraps things up guys, remember to smash that like button or I'll smash you. And until next time, stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.